Welcome back to what I assume will be the final part of my video series on foam core inserts. Uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to do the final touches. Um, I'm going to try and figure out a way to hold these tiles in the main compartment here. And what I'll also do is I'm going to line uh, both the coin tray and the centre of the card caddy. And I'll show you how I do normally do that process as well just to make it look look a bit better and uh, and be able to recover the pieces a bit more easily. Um, so um, I've been looking at these pieces trying to figure out how I'm going to fit them into this space. Now this space will also hold um, the tile bag and the score pad. There's plenty of room um, but I'm just trying to figure out the best way, neatest way to get these to fit. So what I've done, um, unfortunately, these tiles are a bit too long, and they stick up. They stick up above the height of this uh, this partition. So they, these tiles, unfortunately, the building tiles are going to have to lay flat, something like that. And to that end, I've cut a couple of pieces um, before just to uh, hold the basically something along those lines, like that. So there's a little gap there for the finger to pull them up. Now that's not a wonderful use of space, but it'll it'll do. Um, now when it comes to the other tiles, um, that's a little bit more challenging. These are, they're not quite the same size, unfortunately. I, in any orientation, they're not, they're not quite the same size. These, these tiles are 25 mil square. These tiles are 26 mil by 22. So the way I the way I see it, so if I if I just take a couple of scrap pieces of foam core and sit them in here, it's three pieces of foam core. That takes these, these square ones to pretty much flush with the top. So if I, if I build something to hold these tiles in place, if I can get them pretty much flush with the top here, they'll be nicely capped by the board sitting on top. If they're sitting too low, if they were just sitting low in here, and they only had a short uh, sort of thing to hold them in place, as soon as I turned the box up, they'd fall out and they'd end up being loose in this compartment. So if I can, if I build them up, they'll sit sort of like that, and then these ones I'll sit sideways. Now these ones, that way they're roughly the same size. I mean, 25 to 26 mil, that should be okay. These ones are a bit shorter when we sit them like this, but still, that's not enough space for them to fall out. So what I'm what I'm foreseeing is I'll have the tiles in one corner with a um, sort of a, a contained area for them in one corner, and then what I'll do is I'll have um, two two strips of foam core sitting like that, and the tiles will sit in between them. Like that. This is incredibly difficult to, to visualize, but uh, sit between them like that with some foam core underneath to hold them up. Um, and then there'll be uh, dividers between the different types of tokens. So I'll have one compartment for these square um, uh, tokens and then one for the rectangular tokens. And then I might do a small narrow one just for the single one by itself, or I might just fit that in with some of the others. Um, so once again, I'll, I'll do all the cutting and measuring off screen. You've seen me do cutting and measuring and how I do it. Um, so I'll come back once that's all cut to size and ready to glue. Okay, so here are the pieces cut out. Um, this is, I'm just going to sort of sit them together so you can more easily understand what I was blathering on about before. Um, so essentially what I've got is a, is a three high block that sits in the middle. Some edges and an end and then essentially I've got some dividers that will sit in here like 
like that. The tokens will log in like that. Put it there. And the rest of the tokens will fit in like that. So what I'll probably do is just glue this together as its own separate entity and then I'll glue it into the box um, once I've put in the compartment for these and this. So I'll glue all that together and I'll uh, show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so here we are with all the pieces glued in. Um, so because, because in this particular case, we've got a couple of pieces that are sort of um, what I call floating, so they're not structurally supported by anything. For this piece, I've actually put some uh, nails in in the side and in the bottom, just to give it a bit more rigidity. And I've done that on, on this side as well and going in from this side. Um, this piece, as I said, I glued together as its own separate box and then I sort of glued it in uh, in the last minute. So I'll re reassemble everything. So this fits inside the box here. These town tiles fit in like that. The uh, station markers and the uh, game end marker, which I decided to put together because it was easier, fit in like that. The uh, neutral buildings fit in this slot like that. And then we can just pop all the other pieces back in. Yes. These tiles are just going to kick around in here. Again, I could, I could make something to hold them in place. I don't see a huge amount of point in it. I'm just going to leave it like that. Manual and in the bags. Pretty comfortably. Expansion board, player board, expansion manual, game manual, and the main game board. Flush. All right, so basically we're done. We could stop right now and be happy the rest of our lives. Again, that's not really my style. What I'm going to do now is I'll show you how I line um, the trays uh, with coloured cardboard to make it easier to get the pieces out. So I'll go and grab my cardboard and we'll get started on that. Okay, so we're back. It's another day. Um, you might be able to hear Avatar in the background, so enjoy that. Um, so what we're going to do now is the two trays that we're going to line. Um, so what we've got is some colour appropriate-ish card and and some scrap card that we're going to use to uh, help us make a curve. Now for these uh, shallow trays I'm not going to bother making any sort of rounded bottom I'm just going to line them with card flat on all four sides um, but what we'll do is we'll start with we'll start with the curve tray first so the first thing that we want to do is line the sides with card of the colour that we're going to make this compartment. So these tokens have a sort of a dark blue-ish tint to them, so I'm going to line it with a dark blue card. Um, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the size of these pieces um, and cut out card of that size. Now, I happen to already have measurements um, for this tray anyway, obviously because I made it before. So I need 90 mil by 21 mil uh, pieces of card for these sides. So I will cut that now. Okay, so we've got our two pieces of card. So now what are we just gonna do? So this card is um, is smooth on one side and it's got like a, uh, uh, like a linen sort of embossing on one side. So I normally apply the glue on the embossed side. So you just, a small amount of glue and then smooth it out now with with card like this this is a little bit fiddly but you want to make sure that you get the car the glue all the way to the edges all the way to the corner so it won't peel 
but um, you also want to try and make sure that you don't overlap the glue on the sides because it'll end up coming over the other side getting on your surface that you're going to see so you want to try and be as neat as you can getting it all the way to the edges that will do well enough all right so now we're going to apply this to one of the sides of the tray and again i'm making sure i'm wiping all the glue off my fingers as i go because if i if i press this card with gluey fingers it's going to end up with gluey fingerprints on it i'm just putting that on there Move it down. You can use the uh, the back of a ruler just to press it in the corners and at the base. Okay. So there's one side lined. It's probably not very easy to see in the light, but it's it's lined. All right, I'll do the other side now. Okay, so the compartments are now lined, or the compartment is now lined on the sides. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a curved base to help uh, get the tokens out. So for this, we just need a flexible piece of card. Uh, it doesn't really matter what color it is. The only important thing is that we don't want it to be creased or folded in any way because it will prevent it from forming a nice curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the width of this. So 40, so 44 millimeters. We're going to make it a bit narrower. So we'll go 42 millimeters. And we're basically just going to cut a strip of card that's that width. Okay, and then what we're going to do is this is going to fit in this compartment and it's going to provide us with the curve that we like. So I would, I would sort of suggest that something like Something like that, I don't know if that's visible on the camera. Is about what we want. And so what we can do then is just hold that where we want it. Measure this off. So let's say 118. 118. And we'll cut that square. So that will form the curve. Now you want it to be, you want whatever curve you want, you want this to be a little bit sh shorter. Basically you want it to come not quite to the top, but a little bit lower. So by a couple of millimeters, I don't know again if that's possible to see on the camera, just slightly below. So what I've really done is I've, I've cut this a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna shave a couple more mil off just so it sits um, a little bit squarer. I'll just shave that off because we don't want the curve. When we create the curve, we don't want the curve to be basically close to a right angle. We want it to be more of a gentle curve. The, um, the larger a token uh, that you're gonna put in a compartment, the, the uh, I guess, larger radius of curvature you want on the circle. If it's a very, very small token, you can have a very tight curve, but if it's a bigger token, it'll get caught in the curve. So you want it to be a flatter curve, a, yeah, a larger circle. So we will just trim a little bit off here. Could take, say, three mil off, something like that. That's about 115 mil now, I guess. Yep, all right, and then Set that in there, yeah. So that's that's sort of more what I want. Again, I'm not sure. It's hard to see in the black black card on black foam core on dark blue. But anyway, that's um that's what you're going to do. And then now that we've got that, we're going to coat the back of this in a very even as even as we can layer of PVA. So we'll. Smooth this out. Now this step, this is why my cutting board is so covered with blots of glue, because this step 
requires that everything is fairly, fairly uniform because it aids the card in in folding neatly and uh, rolling over neatly. So if it's all uniform, it'll have a nice even even fold or even curve. Okay, so now we're going to lay this in. Now, again, important that we don't have glue on the edges because if we have glue on the edges, it's going to get on our nice neatly lined part of the compartment and we're going to end up with glue on it, and marks on it. So we sit this piece in, sit it at the edges. And then if, if this wasn't sitting central, which it is nicely, you would then put your finger in the middle and slide the whole sheet left and right to make sure you get an even curve on both sides. In this case, it's fine. But what we just want to do is push this card down so that it's sitting shy of the, of the top by a couple of mil on both ends. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute. And hopefully oh, that end has started to glue itself down already. So just try and keep that neat. Okay. So I don't know again if that's visible, but the, the edge of that is sitting just a couple of mil down from the top. And that's doing that on both sides. Uh, yeah. I don't know, maybe. Okay, so we now know uh, the length. So it was 115 mil. What we're now gonna do is we're gonna cut another piece in the color so that we can line it with the colored piece of card. Um, but so that it's maybe two or three mil longer than this piece. So that this one will actually come all the way to the lip and it will cover, cover this, uh, this piece entirely. So you won't see the black underneath. Um, and also because we cut this one slightly narrower than the actual compartment, because all this is doing is providing a base for the other one to sit on, uh, this one, so we get, we'll cut this one at 44, 40, yeah, 43 and a half mil wide. So this will fill as much of the compartment widthwise as we can. Okay, so we have a piece cut here. When you're cutting this piece, make sure it actually does fit. So you want it to be nice and nice and crisp and a neat fit. So this one, this one looks pretty good. All right. It's also important to give the bottom sheet a bit of time to dry. If you try and line this piece up on top with glue and the bottom's still wet, it'll it'll move everywhere and it might bubble, which you definitely do not want. Um, so what we're going to do now is we'll apply some glue to this one. You don't want a huge amount of glue here. You just you just want a thin, even layer across the whole piece of card. But you do have to work fairly quickly because it's so thin. It will dry fairly fast, especially if it's a warm day. Now I haven't put enough glue on here, so I'll add a little bit more on this side. quickly line up one side first with the edge, press it in, and this is where we're sort of going to, just going to follow, mum's in the kitchen, we're in, mum's in the kitchen mate, you go around and find her, okay, we're just going to work from one side to the other following the curve, pushing it in, in this case I haven't quite done it evenly, but that's okay, we're going to fix it when we're finished. you do it. That's it. Now in this case, yes, I haven't quite, I've got a little bit of overlap on this edge, which 
you can sort of see just just here um, I'm going to fix that later. Um, ideally, you don't want that to happen because this is quite difficult to fix, but I can fix it. Um, it's just going to require a very, very sharp blade. But basically, that's how you're going to line a compartment and create a curved base. And so now, with these, these tokens in this compartment, it's very easy to just grab one and slide it up the side and it'll just come straight out. All right, so li lining square-based uh, compartments is a little bit easier. Um, so we've got some cardboard that is, I mean, it's close. It's not perfect. It's not nowhere near perfect, but it'll do. Um, what we're going to do for this one, um, so I'm, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can cut pieces for each side and glue those in and then cut, cut a base piece. You can cut a single strip that does the whole side and fold it and glue it around the edges and then put a base piece in. I'm going to try and do it all in one piece, so I'm going to cut a piece that will fit the bottom and then uh, and, and then have it fold up the sides um, just into the corners. So the first step is to figure out how high the edges are. So in this case I know that again because I've already glued it, so it's 14 mil. So I'm going to mark 14 mil uh, on my sheet and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to mark it at 13 and a half mil um, because then I allow for the thickness of the card on the bottom of the compartment as well. So I'm going to mark 13.5mm on the sides of this sheet with a pencil. So I've done that. Now what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to do it because it's quicker, oh, I'm going to use my calipers to measure this width. Doesn't matter what that is really. Okay, mark this. All right, that's that's width. Now we do the other one. And again, we weren't. I wasn't particularly precise in terms of the internal measurements for these compartments when I made them. But that doesn't really matter. If you're using a caliper, it, it's fine. It'll just be what, what it is. It'll just be what it be. I have absolutely no idea what's going on in the kitchen. And now I'll just measure 13 and a half on this side as well. Now we're going to cut that out and then cut off the corner pieces. So that's our net. Now what we're going to do is we're going to score these lines so that it's easier to fold. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do that with. I need something rounded. Um, I'll go and grab a biro. Okay, so we're going to just roll a biro along this line to help us with the fold. Help to keep the fold crisp. You just want to be careful when you're using a pen in this particular case that it doesn't it doesn't go it's not so dark that it goes through and you can see it on the other side but this should be perfectly fine so now hopefully we should be able to fold these then fingers crossed and then it doesn't fit. Okay. So, oh, there we go. So good. It's just tight. Yeah, it's too tight. Okay. All right. That's the general idea. So, 
What I will do now, I will redo that, but what I will do this time is allow for a couple of mil on the bottom square so that it sits a little bit uh, neater in and then the sides should just come up, the, the, uh, come up nice and neatly. So that's the principle. I will fix it off camera. Okay, so it turned out it was actually easier to fix than I thought. Um, I've just taken some little, tiny little wedges out of the corners and it's given us a little bit of extra room to play with. It is going to mean that there is going to be a small gap in the card in the corners. I don't particularly care about that. It's not going to be something that's going to be very noticeable. So now I'll pull this out. Hopefully without folding it. And we will apply some glue. Now, in this particular case, when we're applying the glue, we're going to go, we're going to do the base first. A real risk of curling this card as we put it in a chunk of something. Get rid of that. And we want to try and keep this again, keep it fairly smooth, eliminate any bubbling that we're going to get. If we go a little bit up the sides, it doesn't matter, but I don't want to go all the way to the top on the side pieces because that'll just end up, we'll just end up smearing glue everywhere when we try and fit it back in. Okay. So we'll put this in here, like such. Try and put it straight. Put the corners in first and then just push it straight down. but it should be okay. And again, yeah. So it's going to stick up a little bit. Unfortunately, the base of this isn't exactly square. That's okay. So we'll just work the corners in and the nail. It's actually going to help it sit square, actually. Okay. Again, it's a little bit proud at the top, but we're going to fix that in a minute once it's all dry. So now what we do is we'll fold down two sides like this and we'll apply some glue on here try not to do what I just did and put a heap right in the corner because that's going to be really hard to work across we're just going to work that around again it doesn't have to it, well in this case it doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom we just want it to make sure that it comes all the way to this to the top edge that's way too much in the corner there and there's a very real chance that's going to squirt when i try and fit it in mm, not too bad oh, that's right okay that's one done Get this side Okay, so that is that done. Now, clearly, if you don't want to obsess over this, it's significantly easier to not bother doing this at all. Um, but I like the way it looks. It sits nicely with the coins in the compartment. Very nice and neat. So I'll do the other one now off camera uh, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so that's the second one done. Um, just for reference, if you make the base square very slightly, or rectangle very slightly smaller, and then cut just a little bit more out of each corner than a square, so you just, just, take, just take a little bit more from the outer edge, still come into the corner, then uh, yeah, hey, it fits a whole lot better. So that gray one is, is pretty much spot on, doesn't need any additional trimming. Um, but as I said before, these ones here where we've got just this proud, proud bit sticking up over the side, um, so it's really uh, sort of on three edges on this one, 
and on the on the curved one from before so you can see the curve has come out quite well we've got this edge here which is sitting just a little bit up so to fix this um, what you need is a uh, you need a cutting surface that's very that has a very very sharp edge on it, a very sharp uh, square edge so um, I'll just, I'm just going to go and check. I might have a better chopping board than this, but I'll, I'll just go and check and I'll come back in a second. All right, so this is the best board that I've got. So we'll use this one. Um, again, what you want is you want a you want a board with a very square edge. And I'm going to actually sit it over the edge of the table like this. Just bring the camera across a little bit. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece, this is our this is our edge, we get a fresh blade and give us a bit of length, we're going to sit it on this corner and we're going to cut down like this. Now this is incredibly fiddly and you want to get it right the first time because you don't get a second shot. If you don't get it right, you will ruin your liner and then you'll have to do something to, to try and fix it. So we take it slow, we don't have to do it all in one go. Take it nice and slow. We'll just take it. Yeah. And that has taken that taken that edge off. Nice and neatly. I don't like doing it. It's better off getting it right the first time because as I say, if you get it wrong, then it, it ruins this edge and then it's just messy. I've done that a couple of times on a couple of inserts and I don't enjoy having to fix it. All right, I'll do this one up. And then once this one's done, we're finished. All right, so I was almost done and then I decided to go a little bit over the top. So uh, just to hide these joins here, I've just cut out I just measured and cut out a little thing that I'm going to glue on here just to make that look nice and neat. Um, again, this is all completely pointless. You don't have to do this. I just uh, obsess over such things. So I'm going to glue this on now. Uh, and once we've done that, we'll pack everything back in the box and we should be good to go. There we go. All neat and tidy. Well, until I did that and smeared glue all over the top of it. So there's a little bit poking out the sides. That's okay. That's okay. This will dry and it will be all well. Okay. So we're done. That's it. Fantastic. So Building tiles going here. This piece, this piece. Hmm. I'll put the other pieces in, give that a second to dry. Card caddy in here. Coin tray in here. Player card trays in here.
So there you have it. From go to woe, that is how you do it. How you make yourself a incredibly over the top insert. Again, all you really need to do to get started is partition up a box and put tokens into the different partitions. You do not need to do any more than that when you're beginning. Um, and then once you're comfortable doing that, make some trays, make some removable trays that come out. And then if you want to do more than that, then you can start making card trays, card caddies. You can start making slots in the box to hold tokens, to hold cards. And, uh, and you know, eventually you can color line compartments with cardboard if you so desire. Um, anyway, I hope this has been illuminating and useful to you. Um, if you've got any questions, please comment below. Uh, you can also contact me uh, on Board Game Geek, if you're on Board Game Geek, my username is Penguinized, P-E-N-G-U-I-N-I-S-E-D. Send me a geek mail. Um, I have a geek list on there uh, with all of my designs uh, and uh, sort of pictures showing how they go together. Um, yeah, so thanks. It's been a lot of fun uh, to do this and to uh, share it with you. Um, yeah, so I'll see you around. Thanks again.